like, hey, am I going to do this process or not? Or do I have to go and find something that will 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 find <clears throat> all right i think we're live what's going on guys hope all is well happy monday happy monday welcome to this uh i'm going to start calling this the real talk real talk episode one I've tried to do different things and I'm like, this is the one. This, I've tried to do one where I'm interviewing different people. I've tried one where I'm, um, you know, getting other people in my program to be a part of it. I'm like, you know what, what I'm just going to do is very, very simple. I'm going to apply the exact principle that I apply to my journey and apply to this so that I can give you as much value um, for those that are on the journey right now and specifically for married men that have gained more than 50 kilos. Like crazy, crazy concept. And I've applied this ever since this year, ever since this year, I've applied it to my journey. I've applied it to the guys that I'm coaching right now. Now, it's a method of losing one kilo a week. One kilo a week, man. Let me, let me say this, man. It is so simple yet powerful, right? If you, if you focus, your focus right now, if anyone out there, you're listening to my voice and you're like, you know what? I need to lose the weight. I've gained all this weight. I'm like, come on, enough is enough. One, one strategy that I would give to you right now, which is gold. It's gold. And I never had this. And I like... I wish that I knew this three years ago. It would have saved me so much time, hassle, headache, stress. It's just to focus on losing one kilo a week, guys. One kilo a week. And what I find is that most people, and what I did, a big mistake when I first started this journey three years ago, when I when I had to go all in, man. Like I was losing, I was severe sleep apnea. I think the air pressure was about 20. Um, I had gout. I was diagnosed with, I had high blood pressure, diabetes, falling asleep while I was driving. I had my two kids. I was married and I was comfortable. And it was affecting me as a man, my confidence level. It was affecting me, you know, my performance at work. It was affecting me as a father and, and truly enjoying that moment. You know, the moments of your kids, like for any father out there, they know that time is extremely fast when you have young kids. Year by year by year, they're growing, in, you know, they, they go from from sitting up to, to crawling, from crawling to walking. Then they start speaking and then they start talking back to you. It's a crazy experience and I love it. I love it. I love being a father. But I knew three years ago that if I didn't make a change back then, that I would miss out on life or I'll miss out on their life. So when I first started, guys, and let me share with you how I came about this. When I first started this journey, all I used to see was, you know what, I lost this much. I lost 30 kilos in you know, six months. I lost a big amount of weight within a short period of time. And I was sucked into that. I was like, you know what? That's the right. I like, I need to do this way, you know? And, and what I used to do is I used to go out there and I used to try to lose weight quickly. I used to find whatever product, give me a product, give me a strategy, give me a solution out there so I can lose the weight quickly. So you know, I do this six-week challenge. I'm like, I'm going to do this six-week challenge. I'm only going to eat this. I'm only going to eat this. I'm only going to eat this. And I lost a big amount of weight. I probably lost like 20 kilos in six weeks. And it was good. It was mad. But then what I would find is I would work so hard. I would work so hard. It was like that experience of six weeks was like draining me. It was draining. It was intense. It was like war in my mind. And I'm like... You know, every day I'm like, I have these urges around bread. I have these urges around McDonald's and KFC. Just food that I grew up with eating. Food that became comfort to me. You know what I mean? And I would have these urges. But for six weeks, I'm like, come on, Penny. Come on, police. Just do it, man. Lose the weight. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. One week, two week, three week. Every week, step on the scale. Boom. Losing two, three kilos a week. You know, and I'm feeling good. 
that I'm losing the weight. But at the same time, I'm feeling frustrated. I'm short-tempered. It's not an enjoyable experience. So as soon as I hit the six week, bang, I'll lose a big amount of weight, 20 kilos. And I'm, and I'm feeling good. You know, my, my clothes and people are saying, bro, you look, you look like you're losing weight and all this stuff, right? But then what I came to realize that every time I did lose weight quickly, every time I do, did lose weight quickly, either it was, you know, when I did the six week challenge or I was, I was, you know, I was dieting, extreme dieting, I would always put the weight back on. I would always put half the weight back on or, or, or most of the weight that I lost, I'll put it all back on within two to three weeks. And when I put the weight back on, I feel even frustrated. Like comment below if, if you know what I'm talking about, right? It's frustrating because you put so much time and energy within that six weeks. And then after that, you lose the weight, but then you put the weight back on and you burn yourself out. And, and because you put so much time and energy and commitment to lose the weight, you put the weight back on. And because you put the weight back on, you feel even more shitty about yourself. Right? You feel a little more crappy about yourself. You feel more negative. You're like, man, can I actually do this? You know what? I'm going to start next week. I'm going to start next month. And we start getting into this procrastinating mindset. I call it a procrastinating mindset. Stupid mindset. It's a, it's, it's, it, and it becomes a normal way of living. It becomes a normal way of, of, the, of how we communicate to us. And I did this for many, many years. I even find myself doing it now sometimes. But going back to what I was talking about, every time, every time, that I would try to lose weight quickly, I would always put the weight back on. And I would say to myself, why? Why do I always put the weight back on? First of all, I want to say this. It took me like five to 10 years to put on that weight. Like I've been, I, before, I put on, before I put on that weight, I was eat like I had no routine around eating. I was just eating everything and anything. I was just like a really lazy person, like just real talk. I'm a lazy guy. Just chill. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm poly. You know, we're just pure chill people, right? And, you know, food to me, the one thing that I've come to realize, when you don't respect food, when you don't respect food, food will not respect your body. Let me say it again, man. Make, make sure you guys like comment below if, this, if, you, if you hear what I'm saying right now. If you do not respect food, food will not respect your body. So I wasn't respecting food. I wasn't even training. I stopped training after I played footy. And I was doing that for like three to four years. And it became a normal way of living. It became a normal way of thinking. My body adapted to it. And so what I'm trying to say is when you're trying to change addictions around food, addictions around training, addiction around mindset, and you're trying to change it within six weeks, where if you think about it, You've been eating and living and thinking like that for the last 10 years. It's not going to be sustainable. And a great example is very, very simple. You think about an alcoholic, someone that's, that drinks every single day. And they've been drinking for the last 10 years, right? They've been drinking like that. They drink, they drink a six-pack or a 12-pack every single day. And they've been doing that for the last 12, 10 years. What's the likelihood of them transforming and changing and not drinking anymore within six weeks? They might be able to do it for two to three weeks, right? But at the end of the day, they're always going to go back to doing what they're comfortable doing. They're always going to go back to doing what they've been doing for many, many years. And so when I experienced this, I was like, man, that does not work. I keep losing weight, putting the weight back on. I keep losing weight, keep putting the weight back on. And then I said to myself, how do I, how do I just lose weight consistently? How do I stay consistent at this and enjoy the journey, right? How do I enjoy the journey and do it consistently? And I said to myself, is that even achievable? Is it achievable? Is it achievable to lose weight consistently, right? And enjoy the journey without feeling burnt out, triggered, short-tempered, and actually achieve the goal that you've set out to achieve? And I said, imagine if I just, instead of trying to lose two to five kilos every single week, what if I just focus on losing one kilo a week? And I was like, wow, that is so achievable. I can do that. And I thought, you know what? I have seven days, seven days to lose one kilo. That is achievable. And this is where I come into it, guys. Like, this is what I call the real man's way. This way, I'll guarantee you right now, I'm doing it in my journey. The guys that are in my coaching program, they're doing it consistently. 
And it's a matter of just, that is a simple goal right now. For you right now, if you're starting this journey and you're like, Felix, where do I start? I'm like, bro, just focus on losing one kilo a week. One kilo a week consistently. What are the strategies that we use to be able to, to, to be able to achieve this? Especially at this time right now, there's no gyms, right? You know, is walking. They, they apply walking. I'm like, bro, just walk. When I first started this journey three years ago, I was walking and I still walk until today. That's another conversation that I want to talk about. But walking and then they do intermittent fasting. So they can still eat the foods they love. Trust me, I'm all about food is good. Food is not the enemy. Let me say this. This is another, this is another thing that I've learned. Food is not the enemy. We're the enemies. Me and you are the enemies because we can't control ourselves, right? Food is not the enemy. Food is good. Food is nutrients. Food is what fuels our body every single day to enjoy life. So food is not the enemy. So one way that I would suggest for you guys to do moving forward, if you keep burning out, you keep stopping, you keep losing weight, you keep putting the weight back on, I highly suggest this. Focus on losing one kilo a week. One kilo a week. And if you do the maths, if you lose one kilo a week for the next 52 weeks, that is 50 kilos. You will lose 50 kilos in less than 12 months. And you won't just lose it, you'll keep it off. And that is powerful, guys. Why would you keep it off? Because you're not just losing weight, but your body is adapting to this new way of living. Your mindset is adapting to this new way of living. Your body, in regards to exercise, is adapting to it. And slowly you're transforming. You're transforming habits, routines in your life, lifestyle, to a point where you keep the weight off. That's why I, I am all in. I'm all in on losing one kilo a week, even until today. I'm part of my journey right now. All in on losing one kilo a week. You can do it. It's consistent. It's achievable. It's long-term. You're not just losing weight, but you're keeping the weight off. But if you think about like people like, well, 12 months, one year, that's long. Long. Really? Time. Time is fast. We're literally towards the end of April right now. We're going into May. We're going into May. We're nearly at the six-month line in, in 2020. How fast has 2020 gone? It's gone like this. Boom. We're already past second quarter. We're going into the third quarter. So, what my revelation within the last, say, four months, and I wish, I think about this, guys, like, if I would have did this back then, if I would have applied this one kilo a week method back in 2017, I, I would have already hit my goals and I would have been so far ahead in my journey. But I went through many, many mistakes. So the great thing that you can learn right now for someone that's similar to my weight, my starting weight three years ago, over 200, or even if you're at 150, if you just focused on losing one kilo a week, this will be the last ever diet strategy that you ever do moving forward. And it's that simple, guys. I put my life on it, I believe in it, and it's so true and it makes sense, okay? So look, guys, if you have any questions, comment below. Um, look, we do bring in people every single week into the coaching program. And at the end of the day, if you're not committed, you're not accepted. Continue to watch this free video. But if you are that person, you're like, you know what, Felice, enough is enough. I want to know more about the one kilo method. I want to know what is the nutrition that I can apply to be able to lose one kilo a week? What is the exercise that I can apply to be able to lose one kilo a week? How do, what's the accountability? Accountability is key. Accountability is what's going to enable you not to stop, but keep moving forward. If you want to have further conversation, reply, message me, DM me, 120, and we'll take the next step from there. Okay, but other than that, if you have any questions, comment below. And um, I'm sure to answer any questions there is. Cheers.